Hey everyone! This video took a while to make on my part since I was finishing up my fairy video, and also I just really wasn't doing anything for a while. Earlier this year I went on Reddit and looked for an artist to create a set of guns for Bayonetta. Not necessarily as a main set, but in the style of Scarborough Fair, Love is Blue, and Color My World. I made a post on Our Hungry Artist where I was able to find and team up with an artist named Mutton Monkey. He did such an amazing job here, so please go ahead and check him out and support him using the links in the description. Now let's begin. I think the best place to start is what the set is based on as a whole since it's what I've been thinking about for a long time now, even before I started making videos. These guns are based on the Hollywood and La Brea Gateway, which is more commonly known as the Four Ladies of Hollywood. I thought this would be a fun basis since Spanet was always an over-the-top and fun game series, and the one thing I think most people agree on is that the weakest element is its plot. So why not make a set of guns that make a light jab at it since Hollywood is seen as the epicenter of film, therefore plot. Plot is very important to structuring and telling a story. Adding a degree of player interaction makes this a harder thing to accomplish. However, sometimes if you have a game that is fun to play, people are willing to overlook a lesser plot or even no plot. In movies, however, plot is so integral to the process that having a movie with no plot or a bad plot is enough to deem the movie as a bad movie. At least that's my point of view on the subject. Anyway, back off my tangent. The guns are colored silver as a reference to the silver screen and the color of the statue itself. The term silver screen refers to the movie industry or movies themselves. The actual silver screen is a silver lenticular projection screen. It has silver embedded in it to make the screen reflective. It was used as early as the late 1890s and its popularity made the term stick. The name of the set is Fine Romance, a direct reference to the song A Fine Romance originally composed by Jerome Kern and written by Dorothy Fields in 1936. This song was covered by Marilyn Monroe on September 3rd, 1954. You may wonder why Marilyn Monroe? Aside from being one of the most famous actresses of all time, as well as being an iconic sex symbol, which fits the tone of Bayonetta, atop the Four Ladies of Hollywood is a statuette of Marilyn Monroe in the Seven Year Itch when she stood on a subway grate that blew her dress upwards. On to the individual guns themselves. They are each based on the four actresses depicted on the sculpture. The four actresses are Anna Mae Wong, Dolores Del Rio, Dorothy Dandridge, and Mae West. The guns are all named after the movies where each of the actresses made their first starring role. Engraved on all the guns is a quote by each of them. All the guns' handles are styled with swirls to mimic the pattern on the sculpture. Now moving backwards a bit, I'll talk about the concept ideas of the gun shapes. Mutton Monkey gave a bunch of different sketches on different gun types, and I ultimately went with the Remington Model 1858 as the base design, but with a much bigger barrel to fit the Bayonetta style. There isn't any real reason to why I went with that one, I just liked how it looked, and I liked the handle of the gun. The charms are probably my favorite part of the design, though. My original thought, which is still in the main part of the design, is that the charm should be based on the four original Hollywood Walk of Fame icons. However, he had the coolest idea in mixing the Walk of Fame icons with earrings worn by the actresses each gun is based on. It led to these wonderful designs here. The stars in the small sphere are reflective of the 2,783 stars on the Walk of Fame now, or at least as of now. All four of the actresses have stars on the Walk of Fame for motion pictures, so I decided to assign different ones to each so all four icons would be used. First, let's start with the gun representing Anna Mae Wong. The Toll of the Sea. Its accent color is blue-violet to pay homage to Madama Butterfly since the Toll of the Sea is a variation of the Madama Butterfly story set in China instead of Japan. Engraved on it is the quote, Every time your picture is taken, you lose a part of your soul. I chose this quote as I feel like it can be interpreted to reflect on Bayonetta's relationship to Luca. In the first game, he always has a camera ready to snap a picture of her, and in the third game, she did indeed lose her soul. A bit of a literal interpretation than a figurative one, but I like the quote. The charm for the Toll of the Sea has a symbol for broadcast television represented by a television receiver. I chose this for her since Anna Mae Wong, in addition to being considered the first Chinese-American film star in Hollywood, her show, The Gallery of Madame Lu Song, was the first US television series starring an Asian-American lead. Next is the gun representing Dolores Del Rio, Powell's first. Its accent color is pink, which comes from the lobby card of Palace First, specifically the pink flower adornments on it. 
Engraved on it is the quote, the true essence of beauty lies in the eyes of those who see it. Bayonetta is without a doubt a beautiful witch in her world, captivating many people who see her walking by. When players first see her, beauty and sexuality are the first thought most have. However, she's sort of a tragic hero who despite her hardships always manages to have a pose and a quip ready. I believe that can be its own essence of beauty. The charm for Pals First has the symbol for motion pictures represented by a classic film camera. I chose this for her since I am a little biased as I am of Mexican descent and I have lived in Durango for a short time which is where she was born. Not to say that this was defaulted to her though, she is a very important actress in both American and Mexican cinema. Here we have the gun based on Dorothy Dandridge named Bright Road. Its accent color is yellow which is based on this poster for the movie Bright Road. Engraved on it is the quote, Sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty to get things done. Bayonetta as a hero is not shy to be naughty whether you think this means to mean sexual or not. She literally works with demons to protect her world, her loved ones, and herself. The end sometimes justifies the means, and I think the quote represents what Bayonetta does well. The charm for Bright Road has the symbol for audio recording or music represented by a phonograph record. This was the easiest choice since alongside being a talented actress, she was also a talented singer and was first part of a singing trio with her sister Vivian and her friend Etta Jones. The group was named the Dangerous Sisters, though she later became a solo artist and throughout her singing career, she was also acting. Finally, we have the last gun in the set based on Mae West named She Done Him Wrong. Its accent color is green to reflect the green lighting on the theatrical poster for She Done Him Wrong on the right side of her face. Engraved on it is the quote, To air is human, but it feels divine. I chose this quote as it reflects a big aspect of the world of Vanetta, and that is humanity. The Umbra Witches and Lumen Sages were tasked as overseers of the world and time. Essentially, they acted as liaisons to the other realms, Inferno and Paradiso, respectively. Probably the biggest example of this is where human free will triumphs over a god's desire to unify the realms in the second game. Also, the tone of the quote just fits a bayonet equip in my opinion. The charm for She Done Him Wrong has the symbol for broadcast radio, represented by a radio microphone. I chose this for her because of the time she was banned from NBC Radio. While she had been risque on the radio before and was very well known for her double entendres, she was banned when she did a sketch written by Arch Obler. She was scapegoated since many groups, primarily religious ones, put the blame on her and their complaints were later endorsed by NBC Radio when they banned her and blamed her delivery of the lines but not the actual content of the skit, which doesn't really make any sense. I figured representing her with the radio symbol is a nice little nod to those people who would have had a heart attack if they saw Bayonetta. This was a lot of fun to do. I want to thank all of you for tuning in, and I want to thank Mutton Monkey again for doing this for me, as he did it so amazingly. He captured exactly what I wanted, so please go show him some love and support. As for me, my next planned video is on the homunculi from Bayonetta 3. It'll be out as soon as I can, but as you can see from my track record, it's best I don't give an exact timeline. I appreciate you all watching this video, and I hope to do some more fun things like this to accompany my main stuff. I'll see you next time. Yeah.